Welcome to The Real News. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us once again. On Thursday, June the 11th, the European Human Rights Court in Strasbourg, France, reversed the conviction of 12 BDS activists and awarded them compensation from France, saying they were wrongfully charged, quote, with incitement to discrimination because of their BDS activism. Now, as a reminder, BDS is the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement against Israel. It's a grassroots movement with millions of supporters throughout the world to end the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land. The Israeli government has been pressuring governments to ban BDS and outlaw them as racist and anti-Semitic, despite the reality that BDS stands against racism and apartheid and is committed to nonviolent protest, working within the boundaries of human rights and international law. Here in the United States, 23 states have passed anti-BDS legislation. And the significance of the ruling by the European Human Rights Court is that it applies to all member nations of the European Union. Now, while Palestinian and solidarity groups and others celebrate the court's decision, it's unclear whether the French government will file an appeal and what that means. And to wrestle with the significance of all of this, we're joined once again by Sonia Feynman, who is a French activist. Uh, she's been active in the progressive grassroots movement since 1968 against the occupation. And she's a member of the organization Union of French Jews for Peace. Uh, and it's also with the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network. And Sonia, welcome back. Good to have you with us here on The Real News again. So, Sonia, let me, let me start with, with this case itself. I mean, the, the, the 12 people convicted and now acquitted were charged with a crime of distributing BDS flyers in front of shopping centers. And there are thousands of people in France who are doing this all over the place. And um, what's interesting is, is BDS is made up of Jews and Christians, but the majority of people here who were brought to trial in France were Muslim or had Muslim names at the very least. So is this a coincidence? Is something up in, afoot here? Um, I'm just curious about what you think about that. Well, I'm not sure uh, they were the majority of the group. Uh, there were several of them who were, uh, who were and are uh, Muslims, uh, most of them French, but two of them not non-French. Um, and well, it, it's clear that um, Arabs and Muslim people in France uh, are mostly in favor of Palestine and of the Palestinian rights. So it's not surprising that in the BDS movement, uh, there are so many uh, Muslim people. But at the same time, there are also all other sorts of people, and in particular, Jews like me. <laughs> and like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to, 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 this pushes us a bit further. I mean, um, I, you know, the French courts and parts of the French government have really been pushing a very strong pro-Israeli line. I mean, this, this, this decision um, seems to be pretty significant in that it, it, uh, it talks about the entire European, uh, everybody who's a member of the, of, of the European Union. So and in this battle, they, they, first the French courts fined uh, the activists significantly, and then the European court decided, no, now we're going to find France to, to reimburse and pay the people who were convicted. So, I mean, so despite the back and forth legally, what is really at the, the significance at the heart of this, do you think? Well, first of all, what's significant is the resilience of these two, 12 people who acted with, uh, in front of justice for years because that was they started in 2009 and they had two, two uh, series of actions in 2009 and 2010. And then all these trials and appeals and so on and the court de cassation uh, in France finally in 2015 uh, confirmed the, the, the appeal and condemned them. So that's a very important uh, fact. And, and now we are all very pleased that, that they are uh, released uh, and, and, and that the, the, the European Court, the European court uh, gave them justice. And at the same time, it's, it's important to see that uh, the European Court of Justice examined the, the, the law, uh, this uh, law of uh, freedom of press, uh, which uh, dates back to 1881 in France, uh, with two, two specific articles, the, the 7th and the 10th. Uh, and and the, after examining the, the, the whole affair, they, they decided that uh, it was not a question of hatred, as the French government was saying, hatred and discrimination and racism against uh, Israel and the Jews. 
Uh, no, it was a, a question of uh, political uh, expression, political freedom, and freedom of expression. So that's important at a time when um, France is keep keeping this habit of uh, pursuing. There have been about a hundred people uh, sued in France since then, but uh, they're, they're not, they've not been convicted as the Mulhouse ones. Uh, so it's important in France. It's important in Germany too, because the, the German government is very uh, hard on against uh, BDS. So. Uh, I want to pick up on that point. I mean, the, the, the difficulty here, so is historically around the BDS movement, especially in Europe, in the United States as well, but especially in Europe, um, where the, the, the sensibilities and, and the sensitivities are run deep on both fronts. I mean, Europe was the home of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly Germany is really always bending over backwards to say, no, we're not anti-Semitic and we're not going to allow anti-Semitism. Um, and it spreads throughout Europe like that. And then you have the split inside the Jewish world as well, in Europe and across the world, of what Israel is doing. Um, but so, so it's sometimes a very, very difficult issue to kind of to, to address because of all of the kind of historical realities that we all face from the Holocaust to the occupation in this giant arc. So, I'm, so in, in light of the, talk about that in terms of the light of this decision and where you think this takes this conversation in terms of really kind of getting underneath the pain that exists for many people in this. I, I don't see exactly what you meant with your last words. Pain? Uh, I mean, the, the, I mean the, emotional pain, the emotional pain that goes along yeah, with this movement, but right? Who, who, whose emotional pain are you talking about? <laughs> I guess I'm talking about everybody's emotional pain. Because ah. I mean, how, it's how you bridge that in saying that the occupation must end, BDS is not anti-Semitic, and how difficult it is to kind of bridge that conversation. Yeah, well, um, I think, uh, and in, in our organization, UGFP, we think that this uh, whole affair of anti-Semitism, reproaching anti-Semitism to BDS people and to uh, organizations that are critics of uh, Israel, Israeli politics, it's, it's, um, it's um, well, I don't find the word, but it's, important because, uh, well, it's a way Israel is uh, has found uh, in order to uh, smear uh, people criticizing Israel. So they, they kind of invented this uh, thing of uh, anti-Semitism. And so, it, of course, it, there is an emotional pain, as you say, uh, on both sides, but uh, mainly, on it, it's important to show that Israel is not representing all Jews in in the world, and that Israel has been uh, keeping or keeping, excuse me, um, this uh, Holocaust memory uh, in order to invade Palestine and and to oppress people in Palestine. So that's very emotional. But we have to to think politically more than emotionally. Yeah, Glenn Greenwald. Who is also Jewish, <laughs> wrote an article on The Intercept um, called The Greatest Threat to Free Speech in the West uh, is Criticizing Activism Against the Israeli Occupation. And um, so you have this world now where far west, far, far right wing leaders in the West have taken on really serious pro-Israeli views. At the same time, they're trying to crush democratic values in their own country. And the president of the country that we're broadcasting from, Trump, is at the pinnacle of this in many ways. So, I mean, do you think that the court decision can change something for Palestinians, can it protect the free speech in Europe in general? Will it do anything to change the dynamic of the battle and the conversation? Yes, I think what it can change mostly is, is a recognition of the nonviolent um, character of BDS and the, the character of a powerful uh, way of uh, showing uh, the injustice uh, perpetrated in, in Palestine, in Israel. So that's that's a, a first fact, and uh, also what what's important is to to realize that uh, uh, Palestinians are themselves are very res resilient and are resisting for all, for all this time. Uh, so 
Well, I think this uh, ruling of the court can show the world that uh, freedom of expression has to be respected. And in that case, in the case of BDS, uh, it's, it's a significant pace uh, to, to help people doing BDS and acting as BDS uh, in the BDS campaign uh, to show them uh, to show them and to show the world uh, that they can continue, that it's justified and that it's a, a battle for justice and for the respect of international law. So, despite, ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, despite all the efforts Israel is making to smear academics, especially in the United States, because it, they are very power, very active, uh, so for some of them in supporting uh, BDS and the Palestinians. So this uh, Minister of Strategical Affairs, which has been created in Israel, especially to, to uh, I would say, smear people, uh, BDS activists, as well as academics all over the world. Uh, and despite this uh, energy they are making and the, the, the big investment, they are investing huge amounts of money, uh, despite all this, uh, BDS is going on. And well, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, several states in, in the United States have been uh, uh, declaring uh, unlawful uh, BDS, and that's a pity. Uh, France has been trying to do that, but now they, they, they know they can't. And it's giving us strength to, to go on uh, with boycott, disinvestment and sanctions. So finally, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, a do, you a, do you think that France will appeal and what that might mean? And B, I'm just very curious, what, did you expect this to happen? And when it did happen, what, well, what is it like for all of you in the movement in, in Europe, in France especially? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think France will go to appeal, but well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, but I don't think because now, uh, they, they've been all this process since uh, 2010, and um, the, 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 although the, the French government is very close to Israel, uh, they, they've been, I, I think they are conscious, and there is a crisis in France too, uh, with the, the COVID and, and all the, the you know, this, uh, this uh, urgent state, uh, uh, depriving people of kind of liberties. And now with the deconfinement, de uh, there are very many uh, demonstrations, uh, not only in support of George Floyd and uh, against uh, policy, police violence in the United States and in France, because we have the same problem. There are also uh, people in the health sector and many things happening uh, against the government or, or uh, claiming uh, uh, having revendication toward the government. So the government is kind of uh, worried about so many things that I don't think it, uh, they will uh, go to the appeal uh, this decision, but let's see. And um, among the Jewish um, communities, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's various because um, organized uh, association like ours exist also in other European countries. And we, are, we have a, a grouping a federation of uh, groups, which is called EJJP, European Jews for a Just Peace, uh, which has been declaring also uh, that the, the ruling was very good. Uh, and and um, also there is a, a group of uh, Palestine committee solidarities uh, called uh, in Brussels, uh, it's uh, all Europe. So it's called ECCP. Uh, European co coordination of committees for Palestine. Uh, also, they are very pleased with the ruling and every group is expressing its uh, satisfaction about what's uh, decided in the, in, the co in the European court. But at the same time, in Germany, in, Br in Britain, in France, there are these uh, mainstream organizations like the one which is called CRIF in France, which is a council, so-called council representing of a Jewish organization in France, uh, which is a real ally of uh, Israel and not only an, an ally, but uh, um, an, so, like, it's like the, the voice of Israel in France. And they reacted saying that it was too bad but not very violently. So that's also a reason why I can think because, because at the same time, they're close to the French government. So it's another reason that makes me think that uh, maybe there won't be an appeal on the part of the French government. But 
but I'm convinced, and Israel has showed it already, I'm convinced that Israel will continue uh, harassing us and uh, uh, trying to, to prevent uh, uh, actions of uh, BDS and this divestment and so on. Well, Sonia Feynman, hey, let me just first thank you for all the work you do uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this arena. And thank you once again for joining us here on the Real News Network. I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News Network. I'm glad you could join us. Please let us know what you think and take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.